so hot today you guys so if i literally get progressively grosser so sorry i literally have opened the windows and the door and i honestly think it's blowing in hot air i'm not even joking Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Harmony Nice and today I'm going to be continuing my Enchanted Endeavours series on my channel and this episode will be on tea leaf reading and how to do it or as some of you guys may know it as tassiography, which is the official term. Loads and loads and loads of you guys have been requesting this for such a long time, but I personally think in my mind that tassiography is the hardest form of divination personally to me, and it did take me a very, very long time to get used to it. And I also think it's one of the hardest divinations to explain to people how to do. So I'm going to try my best in this video. It's definitely not something that you learn overnight, so please keep that in mind during this video and the tutorial. The first part of this video will be all about tassiography, what it is, what the practice is used for, whether you can actually predict the future of it, the relevancy to Wicca, and pretty much everything that you need to know about tassiography. And the second part of this video will be a tutorial. I'll be showing you three ways and how to do tassiography. Please, please, please remember, and I say this in all of my Wicca videos, that if you are a Wiccan, or someone that does tassiography and you do not do it the same way as me, that is totally fine. We all have our personal preferences on how we like to do things. This is just my personal experience and the same goes for you guys who are just learning this. As your journey continues, whether it be in Wicca, whether it just be your tassiography, you will find your own way of doing things and the things that you feel like work best for you to achieve your like most effective result. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys haven't seen any of my other Enchanted Endeavours episode, I'll put a link to the playlist in the description down below so you guys can watch them there if you please. Here's a series all about Wicca, divination, the deities, etc. Pretty much anything to do with Wicca. And with that being said, let's just hop right into it. Starting with the complete basics, what is tassiography? Tassiography is the art of tea leaf reading that is used for divination purposes, kind of aka future prediction or insight. It's a form of divination where you can predict the future by reading the tea leaves that are left over in your cup after you drink the tea. You see shapes, pictures and symbols that you can interpret in your cup to predict the future. And this is such an ancient practice that has been used throughout history using tons and tons of different mediums like wine residues and also like coffee grounds and things like that which a lot of people do still to this day not so much the wine what is tassiography used for and can it actually predict the future like i said tassiography is just another form of divination and we use divination to either gain insight in general life or in situations that we may need a little bit of help with or if we feel like we may need some spiritual guidance and i personally think it's probably one of the most detailed forms of divination. There's usually two specific types of readings that you do in tassiography. Much like tarot cards, there is a general reading that you can do if you want to just kind of gain some general insight or a more specific reading where you can focus on a subject or a hope or a fear or a situation that you kind of like just to bring things to the surface a little bit more so you can see things a little bit clearly so it can help you. Tassiography is a different way of seeing things unlike other divination. Because you are mainly using your psychic intuition to do these readings, there are thousands, thousands and countless amount of things that you can see in your cup. Anything a human could experience because it all comes from you. Of course, like all divination, you may ask, can this actually predict the future? Much like tarot cards and rune stones that I've answered this before, it can't actually predict the future as such. Once again, you can't sit there and ask the tea how much money you're gonna make this year, whether you're gonna get a promotion next week, nothing like that. It doesn't work that way. But tea leaf reading can help you gain insight into situations in your life or in general. It can be extremely helpful because it just brings everything to the surface. Things that you may already know deep down inside of you or deep in your mind somewhere, but kind of tassiography just brings it all to life. As a Wiccan, I do not believe the future is fixed. But I do think tassiography gives you an insight into the future if a situation or your life in general does not change. If you get a negative reading of some sort, I never actually see it as a negative reading. These can be seen as warnings. Other than it kind of telling you like this is going to happen, it is inevitable, something bad is going to happen to you. It actually kind of gives you an opportunity or a chance to change your thoughts and your feelings in the situation or in life in general and start doing something differently. And it can help you just make positive changes in general. So I never ever see if I get anything negative as something actually negative, which I definitely think goes for the same for tarots and runestones. Tassiography readings focus on what is happening now in a situation. And of course, because we are living and everything, we can change what's happening now. In one sense, it can predict the future, and in another way, no. And also, another query that I definitely had when I first started out in tassiography is, can you use any cut or do you have to use a special one? No, you do not have to use a special 
cup in tassiography at all. Some people do choose to do tassiography in a slightly different way and use a fortune telling cup. And this is just another method of tassiography and I will be showing you an example of this in the kind of tutorial part. But the traditional way of tassiography, which I personally think is the best way to do it, would traditionally use a cup and saucer with a white inside so that you can see your tea leaves and read them accurately and it just makes it so much easier to read them. And use a cup that is like a round bowl shape as opposed to using like a mug or something that's long. You want a kind of short and not very tall cup. I personally think the tea cup that I use for my tassiography is like almost ideal. So something like along those lines is definitely the best best for tassiography. All these factors will definitely tie into making your tassiography a lot easier and more accurate. Whereas with mugs, I personally don't think it's possible, but then again, I've never actually tried doing it in a mug and I'm not really sure if other people do. So I think it's just kind of best to steer clear of them and maybe stick with just a rounded cup and a cup and saucer is really ideal. You'll be needing to flip your cup over to put your extra tea leaves, which you will see later on. And from what I'm aware, using more than one cup for tassiography is absolutely fine, whereas some people do prefer to you know use like one deck of tarot cards or like one set of runes which I think I personally do stick to even though I think you find a teacup that works best for you I make sure that no one else drinks from this teacup so it kind of can just get used to my patterns. I know a lot of Wiccans wouldn't be worried about this but I just personally think it makes sense to me. And of course now we have sorted the teacup now on to the tea. I just sneezed like four times. There is no special type of tea that you need to use in tassiography, but there's definitely ones that will help you make it a lot easier. And as you may have heard me mention, the tea that is most effective for tassiography is loose leaf tea. Using ones out of tea bags is okay, but I also do think they are sometimes a little bit too fine. So the pictures and the symbols may be a little bit harder to work out. And the same goes for bigger like loose leaf tea and because these will be definitely harder to work out the symbols and the pictures that you're trying to see in this cup as well. So a kind of fine, finish loose leaf tea, much like a kind of like Indian blend or an Earl Grey is my personal preference because it's super delicious and like easy to read. Also blends like oolong or white tea or anything like that are definitely really, really good. All in all, pick one that is dark and easy to read and also pick your favorite out of them. And also picking kind of not too finish leaves definitely helps them like sink to the bottom easily. Now, is tassiography used in wicker? Yes, of course, tassiography is used in wicker for various amounts of things. You can pretty much use any divination for like tons and tons and tons of things in wicker. Whether it's just a form of divination or for spell work too. There are plenty of spells that you can use your leftover tassiography tea to do. Some people take the certain like bits of grains of the tea that they want to focus on a little bit more or like the whole of it if they want to focus on it all and they can use it in various amounts of different spell work. Also people combined tarot cards and tassiography and runestones and tassiography to do other types of divination. And because it's something you drink, some people like to make their own tea and put charms on them and stuff like that. Some people take the leftovers of the tea leaves and mix it with other things to kind of create like balms or like things that you can drink. Some people bake the tea like leaves into like cakes and stuff like that afterwards, put charms on them, use them for things like that. There's tons and tons of things you can do with your leftover tassiography leaves. Some people just put them in a bowl and use them for meditation after that if they'd like to focus on specific parts of their reading. But tassiography I definitely feel like is a ritual in itself. I feel like just using your psychic intuitive to this extent to work out all these amazing like kind of scenery pictures and stuff like that within the tea leaves and they are all coming from your mind so your mind is telling you what you need to see at this time and I just think that's an amazing thing for Wicca in itself. And I can honestly say as a Wiccan I always want to try out new types of divination that people kind of like surface. I think it's so fun so yeah. Is tassiography safe to do? I definitely think there is a massive massive stigma around anything that is to do with future prediction or divination like tarot and runestones, obviously tassiography. I think people have a very, very warped opinion about it because they're worried if they're going to get a negative reading or something, that something inevitably bad is going to happen. Also, a lot of people believe the deceased control or divination that we do. Therefore, people think it's a risk doing fortune telling no matter what. Whether you believe the deceased control this or not, tassiography is not dangerous at all. The only risk that you have is burning yourself with a tea, but in a spiritual sense, no, it's tea it's not dangerous. Like I said before, tassiography is predicting your future due to the present. So it's basically telling you what the situation is going to be like 
if everything stays the same. It's telling you the consequences, good or bad, what will happen if the situation in your life in general doesn't change. He can't kill you or make you have a betrayal in the future of any sort. Your psychic being is telling you the future within Tassia Graphic. So it's not a dangerous thing at all, and I hope I just explained that well enough because I really, really feel like I didn't. But if anyone tries to tell you that any type of divination is dangerous, it is not at all in any way please 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 do not ever think it is a lot of people have actually asked me if you can practice tassiography on someone else and read someone else's tea leaves of course you can i have only ever done it on a few other people and i did find it extremely challenging to start with and obviously you do have to do it in a slightly different way like you would with tarot cards and use a bit of a different method to kind of get them a bit more involved so it's their reading other than your reading i definitely think with everything the more you do it with other people the better it becomes and the more you'll learn about how to do it obviously when reading tea leaves something you may be able to see will be in someone else's eyes a completely different thing so i think you definitely have to work along with each other some people do just like having their tea leaves to read and they just kind of want you to read them which is totally fine i definitely feel like i don't have enough experience in reading other people's tea leaves to actually tell you guys what to do and how to do it. You can, you can read other people's tea leaves. And lastly, how do you interpret the leaves? In my tarot card near my runestone video, a lot of you guys were confused whether you just like interpret what you see or whether there's like a book or something that comes with them to kind of help you along. And this is the different thing about tassiography because you have to work out the shapes, the symbols, the pictures, anything that you see in the cup yourself. But when it comes to the actual making out the shapes and what you can see, and everything like that to begin with. Don't follow something and try to think, oh, that kind of looks like that, I'll interpret as that. You need to be able to what you actually think you see in the cup and interpret it from there on out. Use your psychic intuitive to work out what it looks like. For example, say I was doing some tassiography and in the teacup I saw a large fish. Now to me, it could look like a large fish. To other people on the internet or in books or anyone else may think it looks nothing like that. In my mind and my psychic intuitive is telling me it looks like a fish, it's a fish to me. And if it's my reading, it's a fish. That's what my mind is telling me it is. To begin with, I think it is very, very hard since some will mean absolutely nothing to you. You'll be super confused, but I definitely think as time goes along, things become more apparent what they actually mean. I definitely think this is very, very crucial to begin with because you may see something like, I don't know, like a mermaid in your cup and you, you may sit there thinking, I actually have no idea what this means and you made a little bit of help. But to begin with, you can do research on what you see and the symbols. There's lots and lots of books and websites that I will link down below that you can look into if you need a little bit of help interpreting what you can see or just searching up what specific symbols or what something means. Or I think also it's a good idea in tassiography as you go along and as you discover what more things mean to you and you do more research into what things mean. Now. So if you like discover like what a fish means or what you think this means or you do research in it and you find out and you think this is what it means as well. You can also just keep like a little tassiography journal I personally do that, just writing down what I've seen, what I interpret them as, and then that kind of helps me in the future tassiography readings. The more I practice tassiography, the more apparent things have become. Sometimes I can literally look at something and instantly think, that's what that means, that's what it's trying to tell me, it's definitely very relevant to me, uh, and other times I need to do a bit more research into what I can see. 90% of the time I can just like instantly know now. So now I've explained to you what the basics of tassiography is, what it's all about and also the relation to Wicca. Now I'm going to be showing you three basic techniques that I've heard about and that I have experience with. I do other types of readings other than this, but these are just a lot of very, very common ones, very basic ones to begin with. And they are also techniques that I regularly use. But everybody practices divination differently and that is totally okay. And I thought I'd only show you three. I don't want this video to be like five hours long. Please remember, I have to remind you of this, like all divination, this takes practice. When I first did tassiography, I was really put off it because I thought that I couldn't do it when I did it the first time. But actually, even if you don't click with it straight away, keep practicing at it because once you do get the grips of it, it is so, so amazing. Also, the techniques that I use in this are for me. These are personally what works best for me. Before I do this tutorial, I did the filming previously and things look a bit like weird and a bit like mechanic throughout this. But for some reason, it's like the hardest thing to get on film ever. So I'm sorry about that if it's a bit like... So before I start any reading, whether it be in tassiography or not, I start in a calm environment where I'm able to just 
clear my mind and think clearly and just focus on the divination I'm doing. I personally choose to do this in kind of clear, clean rooms where I can just sit and think and I light some candles occasionally. But in the summer, I like to do it outside. Either way, somewhere where I'm not going to be disturbed. And I do this next part at the beginning of every tassiography reading I'm doing, no matter what it is. So I take the cup and saucer I'm using, then I boil the water. And as the water begins to boil, I clear my mind completely. And then I put a large pinch of tea leaves in the cup or like a teaspoon amount. And I do this with my hand usually, and then I pour water over them. And then you can add sugar or whatever you drink your tea with. And as the leaves begin to settle and you bring your tea to a quiet place, begin to think about the situation that you would like insight in or just your general life and your hopes or your fears at the time. Just keep a clear mind. If you're doing a regular reading, just focus on the tea as a settle and allow them time to stand and make sure all of the tea leaves have gone to the bottom of the cup. Now, as I'm sitting and focusing on the cup, I pick the cup up from the handle with my less dominant hand. If they're doing a reading on a specific subject, can say it out loud now if that is their preference before they sit their tea, but if not, just think about it. So I just clear my mind from everything other than those things. I sip my tea until I have a small amount of liquid left in the bottom. And you always want to just leave like a little bit, maybe like half a teaspoon, and it may get very, very strong towards the bottom at the end, so you can pour a small amount away to just achieve having a little bit of liquid left. After this, I swish the cup round with my non-dominant hand once again in three quick motions, and then I turn the cup over on its head. Some of the tea leaves that we will not be reading, the excess liquid will just be left to drain, and I usually leave this for around two minutes to make sure all the liquid is drained out. The first reading I'm going to be doing is the most common one, I believe, and it is the basic future reading. I feel like this can be used for like mainly general reading. This can also help you with more specific questions or subjects you may do insight into as well. But I personally commonly just use this for general readings when I feel like I need one. And this is used to gain insight into the future of something. Now, after the liquid is drained, what I usually do is I tap the cup three times on the top with my less dominant hand. If you do not like this method, previously I've also used another method where I hold two fingers on top of the cup and channel all my energy into the cup. I like both of them, but I do use the tapping method now. I really, really like the way that works for me. And after you've done that, I rotate the cup three times, doing three full rotations and with the handle of the cup ending facing me. So three full times round. This may take a couple of times for you to actually like get your hand round completely. And then I turn the cup over once doing this and begin to read. Now for this specific future reading, I begin to read from the top of the cup. The rim of the cup represents the immediate future or the present of either your situation or in general for your life. Now, I always start with the larger and the darker and the heavier parts of the tea leaves in the cup because I think they are seen as the more important thing you're reading. And at this point, you have to use your psychic intuitive to begin to work out what the shapes are. It takes a long time to get to grips with what working out what you see and you may have to take some different pictures and different parts of the mugs to work out what they mean. What your immediate thought is when you see a shape, for example, there's not a lot on top, but what I instantly see of this shape here is I think of a river and a wave. And when I think of water, I think of like high emotions, things streaming. And I actually filmed this when I had a very, very emotional night and it's pretty small. So it means it's not a big thing but it's still irrelevant. Listen to what your psychic intuitive is telling you, what it is. Um, everybody who reads them will see something different and you may see something completely different to me. After you've read the larger section, then you go to smaller sections of the rim. The smaller bits may only mean absolutely nothing to you and you may not feel the urge or feel the need to read them. I only really focus on the smaller parts that I can personally read. Then I read the center of the cup, which is the middle of the cup. This is the near future, maybe within like a couple of weeks or something. Once again, I start by reading the larger parts and then working my way down to the smaller part. For example, I see instantly a larger skull here. And obviously you'd read the smaller part, so I'll just give an example of one because there's a lot going on this section. Like here I see a dolphin. Because this part is so busy, I like instantly think over the next couple of weeks it's going to be very, very busy and there's going to be a lot happening. You may not see something at first and you may need to like change the angles of things. So obviously you can like angle things around. You don't have to see everything from top to bottom. And then lastly, I read the bottom of the cup and once again, this is the far, far future. So if you're doing a reading for a specific question, it may mean the outcome of a situation. There's actually nothing residing at the bottom of the cup other than a few speckles that don't really mean anything to me, which is probably a really bad first example, but sometimes you may not have anything in specific places in your cup, which may mean there's like nothing of great importance coming. That is the first reading. I feel like it's amazing for beginners because it is Pretty simple. Now the next reading I'm going to be doing is the past, present, future reading. I personally like this reading for situations more. If I have something specific to focus on, I like to see how the past kind of 
ties in with the situation and then it helps me get a better insight into the situation if that makes sense but of course you can use this for general readings too I do occasionally use this for general readings as well once again I'm starting from when I have placed the cup down and I've left the liquid to drain for around two minutes and then as normal I tap it three times but this time because we're doing a past present future reading I twist the cup one full circle forwards and then one full circle backwards and then a whole nother full circle too. And I'm aware that others like to do this differently for the past, present, future reading, but I like this method. Once again, I end the full circles with the handle of the cup facing me. Then I pick up the cup once again and start to begin to read the rim of the cup. So the rim of the cup this time represents the past and how it is affecting your situation or how the past is affecting your life now. I won't read it all, but for an example, the larger shapes I see, the first thing I notice is the head of a horse. And another example, then I go to the smaller shapes. There's a few dot of patterns here which can be relevant to some and completely irrelevant to others. Then I go to the middle of the cup to read next. Middle of the cup represents the present or the current situation you are in. And in the middle section I can see so many pictures and symbols. I was so impressed with this reading. Firstly I can see a triangle and then another one over here. And then I can see a lady with her legs up here and also what looks like a windmill. Or actually, now thinking of it, I can see a lady with her arms up and out. And I would go ahead and I would look a lot deeper into the section because there is also a lot happening here too. And once again, the bottom of the cup represents the future or the outcome of the situation. If you continue the same with your life or the situation. I would start with the large one. And for an example, I can instantly see a man's face. And then you can focus on the smaller part, which are important but of less of importance. And I can see a man with a cat here as well. And now for the last example, I'm going to be using something called a fortune telling teacup, which a lot of you guys may have heard of or may have seen places like Tumblr and Pinterest. I personally was really, really put up with these when I first heard about them because I was kind of thinking that's not the proper way to do tassiography. From receiving it and learning more about it, I'm actually no longer against using them. And I definitely think it would be very, very helpful to anyone that wants to get started in tassiography, but has absolutely no idea and maybe really, really struggling with regular tassiography. It kind of just like helps you dip your toe in it a little bit more to start with. Some people are really, really against these and I do understand why. This one is called the Cup of Destiny, which you may have heard before. And honestly, I think you could probably get better ones, but once again, it's good for practice. To start this method, you begin by doing exactly the same as the other methods until you get to the flipping it over part. If you're wanting to do a general reading, just clearing your mind and focusing on you, if you have a specific question to ask, then you would think about it or say it now. I'm just following what the author suggests to do with this specific cup, even though it's not my personal preference, this method may work better for you. Once again, you have to have a little bit of liquid left in the bottom. And then you can flick it around three times like I did previously, but then instead of flipping it over straight away, turn it round three whole times while it's upright, but counterclockwise instead. That is just what they suggest in there. And once you've done that, proceed to flip it over and wait a few minutes for it to drain as usual. I still like to tap it, even though it isn't actually instructed to. And then you flip it back over and you are ready to read. Once again, start by reading the rim of the cup. So from what I'm aware, the larger bits of tea land on the symbols that are more relevant and that are coming up soon or in the near future. And the lighter bits of tea land on other spots that are still relevant and that are coming up, but not a major happening. And they give you all the answers of what the symbols mean in the book. So that is where you would read them. But as you can see, the tea landed on the snake. So that can signify mistrust in my near future or someone's betrayal. And it's very, very heavily on that. So it's warning me about that a lot. The lighter T landed on the letter and the cross here. And then going into the inner circle, these are symbols are all astrology symbols on the inner part here. And then the reading on these parts are more major and deal with larger themes in your life. And once again, the heavier T lands on the symbols that will be more relevant to you. And these events are meant for the coming weeks and the coming months. So this is the further future. The majority of the T landed on the sun. So I go to interpret that and that would be in a major subject that it was dealing with like a larger theme or a more pr critical part of the situation that I'm in. And smaller parts of T landed on Jupiter and Venus too. So I would interpret them as the less important parts because the landing of the T is definitely much lighter but I would still interpret them as well. Now for the bottom part, if there's ether, I, I personally, even though they didn't actually tell me to do this, if you're doing a general reading or asking a question, you can use your psychic intuition to work out that you can see anything within these leaves. So like a shape or a picture, like I said before, that you would do with regular tassigraphy. And this could be the outcome of your situation. And if it's in a general one, then it could be the far future. And once again, if you need the help with interpretation with any of the shapes, then the book comes with that as well. And that is just a, another way of doing some tassiography. Personally, I definitely feel 
like it isn't as effective as regular tassiography but I honestly think if you're having really really bad struggles with regular tassiography if you're adamant on doing it I would recommend getting one of these I personally do not use it for my readings but some of you it may work a lot better for but I think that is all so thank you guys so much for watching I really really hope you enjoyed this video and I really really hope it helps you with any of your tassiography queries or if you just want to start to learn about it or something like that and if it hasn't I'm sorry I tried to explain the best I could but it's so freaking complicated to explain but thank you guys so much for watching I really really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next video bye guys it's so hot